All right. Thank you, Ainsley. A Texas salon owner becoming a symbol for all Americans wanting to get back to work when they can do so safely. After defying her state's lockdown, Shelley Luther was sentenced to seven days in jail. But following an uproar from state officials, the Texas Supreme Court ordered her released after serving two days. Here with an update, salon owner Shelley Luther. Shelley, good morning to you. Good morning, Steve. You know, I think you were about one of the most famous people in the world last week when you stood up to that judge and he said, I'm going to give you an, uh, the opportunity to apologize. And you said, nope, not going to apologize. Put me in jail. And they did. Why do you think your message struck such a chord with people when you were saying, look, I, I had to reopen my business because we were going broke? Um, I think it, it struck a lot of chords because that's that was America. Like, it still is. There's a lot of people that aren't getting the financial help they need. And across the nation, I'm getting letters and messages from people that can't get through to unemployment. And it's sad. And so I think people, it was just relatable to people. Yeah, I understand. Oh, listen, uh, my sister tried for uh, three or four weeks to get through to the unemployment in Kansas, finally did. But uh, I hear what you're talking about. Tell us about how, before this happened, your hairstylists were coming to you saying, look, uh, they've closed us down. We're going to start going to people's houses to cut hair because we need the money. But you didn't think that was safe, right? No, I didn't think that was safe at all because the, you— the salon is a safe place because we have certain types of material on the chairs that can be sanitized. There's no, like, cotton cloth that can hold any kind of bacteria. Um, and I can make sure there are safety precautions on top of what the stylists are already trained to do. Um, you know, social distancing right. by putting chairs six feet apart, things like that outside. Um, and, and maybe just having a little bit more control over the atmosphere. I didn't want them to spread the disease. And of course, I didn't want them to get the disease or the virus. Right. Indeed. Um, a story's uh, emerged over the last day or so that apparently, while this was going on, a lot of people didn't realize that you had applied for uh, a small business loan or grant, and you wound up getting the money, right? Um, yes. I, I applied for it, um, two of them, the EIDL and the um, PPP, right away, the, the first day that they were available to fill them out. I didn't hear anything for weeks and weeks and weeks. And then all of a sudden, two days before my court trial, um, money drops in my account. And I had no idea what it was. There was no email. There was no information, no letter, no instructions on how to spend the money. Um, so. It, it was it was difficult to even know what it was or how to spend it. So, you know, I don't know. Everything is so confusing and, and crazy coming from the government right now. Yeah, if they don't give you instructions, it's hard to know exactly what to do. You know, I, I was talking to one of my neighbors from across the street, and uh, he's a small business person, and he's been frustrated about how the government at various levels, has been picking winners and losers when it comes to businesses. Mm -hmm. For instance, they said your business, uh, you know, a salon, you're going to have to close down. When it comes to winners and losers, you're a loser. But in your town, right next door, the pet groomer is deemed essential. Mm -hmm. So they get to be open. And the CBD guy gets to be open. But you don't. That, I think, has really impacted a lot of people because, Shelley, every job is essential to somebody. Mm -hmm. That's actually been my my biggest argument. It's um, a, a form of discrimination. And what's really bad about it is the way that they're picking their essential, non-essential doesn't make sense. And then if you cross one county line to another, it, the rules change. So how do they expect us to follow rules when you don't even know what they are if you step into another county? Yeah. You know, uh, we had the president of the United States on our program on Friday. He mentioned your case. You've heard from a lot of people all over the world. What are they telling you? Um, well, I mean, I'm opening a lot of mail and um, people sending in donations and just um, 
a lot of it was just proud of the way that I stood up. Um, but when the president spoke about me, of course, that's a big major deal. You wake up one day and the president of the United States is talking about you. It's a little bit surreal. But it had to be crazy being in jail for a couple of days. You might be sitting in, in the local jail going, you know, I don't know if this was the right thing to do. Was it? I, I never thought that. That never crossed my mind. Um, I was more concerned of my family and, uh, you know, my boyfriend and daughters at home. And I just felt helpless a little bit because I wanted to make sure they were yep. safe. They didn't ask for any of this. So um, that's more of what I felt. Yeah. Uh, exit question. You have reopened. The state of Texas reopened salons and barbershops on Friday anyway. How's business? Business is booming. We have people traveling um, from across the United States to come in and get a haircut just to prove a point that they support us. Um, so this is really, um, to me, given people that sense of liberty back. And um, I'm just really proud to say that we were happy to be part of that movement. Well, I know Ted Cruz stopped by for a haircut last week, so uh, a lot of attention. <laughs> Shelly Luther joining us yes. today from Addison, Texas. Shelly, thank you very much. Great to hear your story. Thank you.